Wait, are you recording? Yeah, you said that. Okay. Manny Pacquiao is the only boxer in history to win eight titles in eight different weight divisions. He's also a congressman, entertainer, businessman, Bible preacher, and even a singer. However, Manny won't be able to accomplish his achievements without the help of his American trainer, Freddie Roach. Before Manny met Coach Roach, he was just an aspiring boxer training at the Wildcard Gym in Los Angeles. Freddie Roach saw the potential of this young boy and decided to take the responsibility of training. What happened next was consecutive boxing championships and cemented Manny's name as one of the greatest boxers of all time. This story is a helpful reminder of the wise words of Lao Tzu, founder of Taoism. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Because of this, it's important to consider the story of the Filipino people in the American government led by President Ronald Reagan and how they work together. We will do that by first, exploring the history behind the declaration of the martial law, second, looking at the role of the U.S. government in restoring a democratic state in the Philippines, and finally, where does the Philippines stand now, and how can an impact us here in the United States? Up until the Second World War, the Philippines was a commonwealth of the United States. During these times, the Americans taught Filipinos democracy. From February 22, 1986, the Filipino people proved themselves to the Philippine People Power Revolution. Let's take a look back in time at how it all started. According to the book Dead Aim by Conrado de Quiros, published in 1997, September 12, 1972, President Marcos declared martial law. The martial law marked an era in the Philippines where there was no press freedom and government oppression was rampant. The suspension of writ of habeas corpus sparked a barrage of human rights violations and murder Philippine free press as we know it. Dissidents against the Marcos administration were imprisoned from students, professors, workers, professionals, and even politicians. All of them were exonerated. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Words of Lord John Acton. President Ferdinand Marcos had absolute power. He was corrupted absolutely. In the midst of all these dark times, hope and protest were in the hearts of the Filipino people. According to the book Edjo, The Unusual Journey of Edgar Jobson by Benjamin Pimentel, published in 1989 by the University of Michigan Press, college students such as Edgar Jobson went out to the streets to protest against the current administration. And since freedom of speech was illegal, government responded with quick police enforcement and demonstration turned into riots. <clears throat> this event is known as the First Quarter Storm. Philippine Senate, the main political dissident of President Marcos, was imprisoned and exiled to Boston, USA. His name is Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino. Despite threats of his life, he still wanted to go back to the Philippines to free the Filipino people. Before his flight back, he was interviewed by the U.S. press in Los Angeles, asking him, why would you still go back to the Philippines despite all the dead threats? His answer was simple, Filipino. Is worth dying for. His act of bravery and sacrifice is something we should all be inspired upon. As when he landed in Manila International Airport, he was shot. His death sparked a movement in the Philippines that became a symbol of unity and passion. Movement, ousting President Marcos. I don't know what happened in the martial law. We don't know what happened in the martial law. In English, now that we know what happened during the martial law era, let's move forward and discuss the importance of the election. According to the book Greatest Democracy Ever Told, People Power by James Trouter Foundation, from Brown to 1986, due to increased pressure from the U.S. government led by President Ronald Reagan, a snap election was held. It was President Marcus against Ninoy's widow, Corazon Aquino. The Government Controlled Commission of Election declared President Marcus as the winner while the people organized national movement of free election, they claimed Corazon Aquino as the new president. What happened next was history. Gene Sharp of Harvard University stated that the events in the Philippines showed that dictators should not be accepted passively, and successful alternatives to violent rebels exist. 
Defense Secretary Juan Ponce Enrile and Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP Vice Chief of Staff Fidel V. Ramos withdraw their support from the Marcos administration. As a result of their actions, President Marcos coordinated with the AFP Chief of Staff Fidel V. Ramos, Fabian Ver, in having a shoot to kill order against these two officials. Knowing that their lives are in danger, Marcos, Ramos, and Enrile fled to Cap Rami, located in the heart of Manila, by Pilfania de los Andes Avenue, or Edsa. Jaime Cardinal Sin broadcasted to the Catholic Church owned Radio Veritas and calling for the people to Edsa to protect Enrile and Ramos. Accordingly, hundreds and thousands of Filipinos flooded the streets, united with one common goal showed their unity against the Marcos administration. Consequently, dozens of tanks and soldiers were deployed. The tension rose. However, as the people offered flowers, prayers, rosaries, food and gifts, they're supposedly murderers. Love took over. Soldier and protester, both Filipinos, Shared peace. During these times, everything seemed all right. Until several choppers went up flying up in the air with orders to bomb Camp Grammy. Everybody thought they're gonna die. But as the choppers landed, the pilots went down and shook the hands of Enrile and Ramos, telling them, Air Force is on your side, sir. Filipino people knew the job wasn't over, as President Marcos still continued with his inauguration in Malacanã. However, minutes later, fled to Hawaii, the Filipino people are free again. President Corazon Aquino was invited to the U.S. Congress to give a speech about this amazing event. In her speech, she called the U.S. Congress as the pinnacle of democracy and thanked American politicians such as Senator Majority Leader Bob Dole for teaching Filipinos democracy. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization stated that this event will forever be a reference point for peaceful resolution and deep national crisis. Now that we know a story of teamwork between the Filipino people and the American government led by President Ronald Reagan, where does the Philippines stand today and how can that impact us here in the United States? Today, the effects of the Philippine People Power Revolution can be felt as the current Philippine president, Benigno Noynoy Aquino, is the son of Corazon and Inoy Aquino. He's doing a fairly, doing, fairly good job in improving the lives of the Filipino people. Kayong Bosco. For in English, you are my boss. These are his words of promise during the 2020 presidential inauguration. Ambassador David Mack, during a Global Voice Hall conference at Northern Virginia Community College, stated that the Philippine People Power Revolution is the perfect model of U.S. approach in overthrowing a foreign dictator. It was made possible to bash in unity the Filipino people. Strategic, strategic utilization of U.S. soft power. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, Filipinos are now the second largest Asian group, with 3.4 million living in the United States. They continue to work hard improving both the Philippine and the United States economy. My mom and dad, though they are not around here anymore, were part of this epic landmark in Philippine history, which makes me more personally proud. As we Filipinos look back and contemplate in this amazing event, we always say and think to ourselves, Filipino is worth dying for. So today, we look at a story Teamwork with the Philippine go Filipino people in the American government led by President Ronald Reagan. We did that by first, looking at the history of the martial era, second, looking at the rise of democracy, and finally, looking at where the Philippines stand today and how can it impact us here in the United States. In the macro level, Filipino, Filipino people worked with the, with the American government in overthrowing President Marcos in 1986. In the micro level, Fred Roach, an American, Manny Pacquiao Filipino work together in achieving boxing supremacy. The working relationship between Filipinos and Americans can be summed up by the words of CBS reporter Bob Simon during his coverage of the Philippine People Power Revolution. We Americans like to think we taught Filipinos democracy, but tonight they are teaching the world. <laughs>